Calaroga Shark Media. Hello, I'm Jenny Mack with your daily comedy news from Polestar. Eating SNL's lunch, how Tony Hinchcliffe's Kill Tony podcast became your favorite comedian's favorite show and sold out MSG twice. Polestar tells us the MSG shows sold 25,193 tickets across the two nights, averaging 12,596 per night and grossing a total 2,389,143 according to the box office report submitted to Polestar. Then a really nice profile about the show. I shared it in the Facebook group, which is Daily Comedy News Podcast group. Polestar says, if you do well as a regular on Kill Tony, you might become a Hall of Famer like David Lucas, introduced by Tony Hinchcliffe as the Dark Roast God when he came on stage. Polestar said he lived up to his name, shredding anybody sitting on the panel next to Hinchcliffe, including Rogan, Shane Gillis, David Tell, Adam Ray as Joe Biden, and Shane Gillis as Donald Trump on night two. Tony said watching my regulars get to have the moment of their lives up there to watch people that got pulled out of a bucket have an opportunity going from sitting in the audience not knowing if they're performing to performing in the greatest arena of all time made me feel so happy. I feel like I haven't even begun to come down yet. Luckily, a lot of my friends that were part of the show have been calling and telling me the same thing. It makes me feel more human getting a call from Andrew Dice Clay saying that was the greatest thing I've ever seen. I've been having trouble sleeping because of the adrenaline. Dice was the first comedian to ever sell out MSG, and here we are many decades later, and he's losing sleep over it. It makes me feel like I'm okay, and I've been getting those calls from absolutely everybody. The Black Keys, Aaron Rodgers, Joe Rogan, uh, and, and another person who some people feel is the worst person they've ever met in the history of their life. I'm not even going to say the person's name. Everybody that was part of it. The Black Keys opened the second night of Kill Tony and MSG. Aaron Rodgers came out to throw Kill Tony footballs in the audience. Rogan appeared after being called a coward by Shane Gillis for endorsing Robert F. Kennedy Jr., over the two days, Brian Holtzman, Polly Shore, Big J Okerson, Jeff Ross, Ari Shafir, Jim Norton, Harlan Williams, Joe DeRosa, and more had performed on at least one of the episodes. That is great. I don't think they've released it on YouTube yet. Um, last time I checked, it wasn't up yet. I hope they do, unless they're saving it for something. Tony said, it's just surreal to have those guys be part of it. It's absolutely a milestone in my life. It took months and months of hard work and me sitting at a desk all by myself trying to picture how this could go, what the flow would be like, just envisioning the two nights of explosion that everybody got to see. It was a lot of manifesting, a lot of picturing. Executing it, quite frankly, was the easiest, less stressful, most fun part. I got to sit back and just watch my vision come true. One of the things that makes our show special is that you're seeing different people, different shapes and sizes and races and ages and everything. Usually with long-form podcasts, you're watching two people have a conversation about different topics for a long time. But on this show... I don't even know how to describe it. It's fireworks. There's different colors and explosions, different moments, and even some duds that make you realize that the whole thing is live and anything can happen, which makes you appreciate the great moments that much more. Hinchcliffe also talked about the roast of Tom Brady and said, I was adapting it up until the very last second. Everything was changing. I was making edits, adding things, cutting things out, and repositioning things. I prepared a lot of those jokes for the roast, but I didn't know how and when I was going to do it. I decided very early on when I got there that I was going to go from left to right and be the only one that moves around. I was trying to figure out what the main cameras were seeing so they could see me and also the person I was roasting. So I was directing while I was performing. It was a lot of work and a lot of adrenaline, a real blur, and an absolute blast. One of the highlights of my life. A lot more to there. I'll hold on to this because uh, traditionally the week after Labor Day is a slow week. So I might need the rest of that story next week and I'll hold on to it. Let's see. I'm editing on the fly here. I've got more from Nikki Glazer from that Vogue article, which I think is best done uh, as Triumph the Insult Comic Dog <laughs> channeling Nikki. Uh, but this is the third straight podcast I'm recording and I'm already losing my voice. If I start doing Triumph, I'm going to lose it. All right. Let me bounce you for now. Late Night Irish spoke to Langston Kerman. Langston was a writer on John Mulaney's Netflix pseudo late night show. Kerman said, you put Lewinell and Pete Davidson and all these big personalities on a couch and they're going to do what they do. And you sort of have to be on your feet and malleable. Mulaney's the best at that and just accepting whatever's being offered to him and figuring out a way to navigate it. Mulaney's ask of us was not to write to him. It was to write to things we actually thought that we wanted to try or things that we thought could be really interesting that we'd be able to take the helm on because he hired a bunch of producer level folks who we wanted to be able to activate and say, hey, go make this thing on your own with our money and our cameras. John Mulaney noticed Kerman's show Bust Down, which lasted just one season and said John was so into it at one point. He had sort of reached out basically being like, hey, if you guys end up doing season two, I'd love to come on as a producer and maybe even be your Danny DeVito fifth in an always sunny kind of vibe. We were like, that'd be awesome. Then Peacock was like, we don't give an F. We're not doing this ever again. <laughs> Stavros Halkias is headed to the big screen. He announced on social media that his feature film, Let's Start a Cult, will be in theaters October 25th. 
The logline for Let's Start a Cult, having missed out on his cult's long-awaited ritual suicide, an obnoxious loser teams up with his bogus ex-messiah to rebuild their doomsday commune. Traveling together through Middle America, the constantly bickering duo induct a military wannabe, a mentally unstable mom, and a mysterious foreign hitchhiker into their cult. But will this family of outcasts fulfill their transcendent destiny or decide this life might be worth living at all? I can already see the protest. People are going to be so mad at that log line. Stavro said, it's really dumb and fun with jokes every minute. And a ton of hilarious people are in it. Uh, there are appearances from Joe Pera, Tom Papa and professional wrestler CM Punk. Kelsey Cook hosts the Pretend Problems podcast with their partner comedian Chad Daniels. Kelsey says, I personally love it, especially because Chad has been doing stand up longer than me. He's my favorite comedian. His new special on Netflix is really good. It is in my top of the year. And so we have zero sense of competition between us and our careers, which is pretty crucial for two comics dating. You have to be actively rooting for each other and have no underlying feelings of FOMO. If one person gets something and the other doesn't, we've been really fortunate that we both feel like each other's success only helps the other. We just want each other to succeed. The only time it can be tough is our schedules. We both have to tour to make money. We're trying to figure out some ways next year to do tour dates together, which I'm really excited about. Hulu creating their own branch of stand-up comedy. They're licensing a group of specials that have already been released. The Hustler has been on YouTube for a little over a year now. It'll continue to live on YouTube, which is great. But now it'll be on Hulu as well, which hopefully will reach a whole new audience. That's super exciting. Lamorne Morris is in that new Saturday Night Live movie called Saturday Night. And he said it was a chaotic filming. He plays Garrett Morris. He told Vanity Fair, I got to say it was chaotic. That might have been intentional because it's all one big cast the same way it was back on opening night when there was so much confusion of what we were doing. There was a lot of that while filming, too. He explained that filming involved a lot of big, long shots, which were really difficult to get right. Once you're doing take number 20, 22, 23, the pressure's on and the actors are tightening up really to see who's going to mess up this shot after a six minute take. You're like, which one of us is going to screw this up for everybody? Reitman directed the hell out of this thing. It's a great look at day one at SNL. The ups and downs, how the show almost didn't happen. The characters, obviously now we know 50 years later what the show's become, but to see the origin of it and the actors in this movie will blow your mind. Saturday night in theaters, October 11th. And my voice is shot. This is going to be the last story of this recording session. Congratulations to English comedian Amy Gledhill. Amy has won Best Comedy Show at the Edinburgh Festival Fringe. The director of the Comedy Awards, Nika Burns, said the judges love the fact that she blends writing that echoes the genius of Victoria Wood combined with the magical physicality of Julie Walters. This show is Make Me Look Fit. Judge Burns said, Amy's show is joyful, delightful, and full of laughter. It's a show packed with jokes and so much heart that everyone in the audience falls utterly in love with her and has a wonderful time. Also, congratulations to Joe Kent Walters, who won the Best Newcomer Award. Judge Burns says, Joe Kent Walters has created the extraordinary character of Frankie Monroe, which is both a love letter and satirization of a working man's club MC. His accomplishment is such that it's hard to believe this is Joe's first Fringe Hour. Joe draws on a range of skills, including pantomime, musical comedy, and stand-up to bring you into Frankie's world. My voice is shot, and that's your comedy news for today. I got plenty of leftovers. I will be here tomorrow, and I'll see you then.